Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And we are seeing risk off come off. Um, here you can see oil is uh, taking a pretty good little dip here. And I guess we've gone and reached a point where um, we've stretched these markets as far as they could go. One of the ones that I was looking at uh, yesterday was on the um, S&Ps. And you can see right here at this 32.34 and on the two hour, you see right here, it made it right to that 32 or just about to that 32.32 and another dip. And we felt that this was, to a certain extent, was about as far as it could go. But once again, I couldn't argue with some of these indexes I've been referencing. And I reference, uh, mentioned that in the chat uh, late yesterday afternoon, like the HYG and the XLF and BKX, those are still, we hadn't seen any reversals in those. So there wasn't anything to say definitively you had to fade it. And yesterday we did see some stops being taken out. I posted a chart there also uh, on the book map chart. You can uh, you could see where uh, on a very much shorter term basis, they had, uh, right when we had uh, got, it was right in here, uh, they're trading around 32.06 or 08, and then they just quickly, you can see, with, well, not here, you said it was more definitive on the book map chart, but you could see some real good volume come in place and where they had just gone and, and taken those, uh, taken them out. Um, bear with me. They had uh, taken them out, and uh, although we didn't, you know, even though we ran up the stops initially, we were just sitting there at only at 32, 15, 16, and I think we moved up to 17, and we sat there. And then, you know, eventually started to go and push higher. What happened was I thought it just seemed just such a um, – I'm not going to say anything. The Fed goes and announces they're going to expand the uh, stimulus program, uh, 30 minutes, less than 30 minutes before the close. So that, that jumped, started the markets even higher. And uh, we kind of kept, kept coming back up in here. We took a dip and uh, I was looking, thinking myself during the Asian session, I said, you know, you may just have to just be willing to go in and take positions against this 32, 30, 32 area here and just be willing to hold them. The only thing, the only thing that gave me some trepidation <clears throat> was we do have the F FOMC, but I was talking to, I think it was Tiana. If you look in the notes here, I was like, you know, I'm not sure there, there's much more that the Fed can go and do after they announce it. No matter what he says now, you it's not like as if they're going to announce another new program at the FOMC. So I think we probably stretch this thing as far as it can go. And this was the number that we had been looking for initially, uh, some other people I noticed that they had, had referenced this also. Pull this over here. Is this 3214 area? If you look on the daily, that looked like an area where the market would want to uh, challenge and could eventually run out of gas. And that, and we could even make 3212, 3214 initially. Uh, if we take a look on here on the daily, <clears throat> we go further back. And I mentioned also, yeah, I saw the RSI up here, how the RSI had been up over 93. And I think the, the Dow futures was at 91. So they're really stretched here. And this is on a five day RSI. So we were exceptionally uh, stretched, but um, 3214, I don't know if I see that from the. Um, To 11. I don't know if it's in on the daily or the two hour. I think it's. Maybe it's on the two hour, but I know that it was 3214 that uh, had been looking at. Although, once again, it's still very, very early. Uh, these markets have just gone way overboard. Uh, I was kind of buying into the thought, and Blake had mentioned that we may just have to see a blow off top, and certainly look like that. But and but then again, like I said, they had just announced that uh, additional uh, uh, lending for, for small business lending, and that pushed us uh, pushed us higher and got us up here. I just wasn't much sure 
I wasn't sure how much further they could go on and move. Although, as I mentioned, I had not seen any reversals or anything like that from these um, uh, indexes. And we're going to get to that. Uh, but you can see how far we had come. And that's why I, I'd even updated these to 32, 34. Speaking of updating, and yesterday um, I noted to um, um, Chi that I thought that there was a chance that we we're going to go to um, go all the way up here to uh, looking at the Dow futures. Twenty-seven five twenty-one, and at the time he was like, "Wow, that's still another hundred points higher." But that was the next level. But you can see we got past that, so I even got rid of that and thought, "Okay, it's six twelve. That'll be my new level." And certainly they did make it up to that, or just about right up to the six twelve, uh, to the point. And we've been seeing real good movement in the um, in the uh, Dow futures enough to the, that that uh, it actually warranted. Uh, some good trading or scalp scalping on this market. Um, you can see here, I wasn't up during this time. This gets this is right at midnight. You can see here we made it. We did make it up to the six twelve. Made it up to six twenty, and uh, you can see here in the um, the spoos that they made it all the way up here. Uh, to the 3230, and now the spoos are 3204. So what we've been seeing previously is you would see these markets pick themselves up in the European session when they took a dip, and they now they're all the way on their lows now, 3204, 3203. So they're really beginning to sell off. You have to wonder how much further it's going to go and accelerate. Um, I myself was just thinking right when I was coming on, I was thinking, shoot, just buy. I mean, you got thinking as a reflex, just buy it. And they did come off from, let's say, about 32.05 to about 32.10, and now they've rolled off to new lows again. But if you think about it, considering how far this, look at this market. This is just since the fourth. Just since the fourth year, and that's 27.50, you're talking – you know, 350 handles just since the 4th. Well, that's the 4th of May, but I'm just saying it's, it's been a, a phenomenal run. Or if you want to go look here, since the, uh, oh, because I was looking at the 30 minute, I was looking at the 5 minute. But what a, you know, phenomenal run just for, since the 4th. Here, if you look even in this dip, that's 275, hand, 200 handles. Uh, all right there, 3080. Yeah, about 200, almost 175 handles. It's just a phenomenal run here we've seen. So it's still very early on. We do have some good volume coming here. I mean, volume area come through here. NASDAQ, uh, same thing here. And you, know, you see a lot of, um, you know, the talking heads on CNBC. So one guy there, and he's like, oh, well, it can just keep on going. And, you know, one of the things I've seen, it, it, and other people have noted also, it's reminiscent of the 2000 where the market just keeps on going. I was saying uh, yesterday in the chat room, you need to pull out your 1999 charts. I mean, how much further can this go? But like I said, to me, it seemed like the, and probably why the market's willing to step in and take these gains is because once the Fed announced that, that program yesterday before the close, it's not like they can announce anything new. I mean, now the question is, like I said, how much further, how much further can uh, uh, stimulus can can uh, pal, you know, say that is needed? I mean, you know, now with the, the employment numbers supposedly turned around, well, you can't say, oh, well, now we still need even more. You see what I'm saying? So it's hard to go on and, and think that there's too much that they could even say at this point. So uh, maybe we'll see a pretty good pullback today. We shall see. But I think that at this point, we may be in a situation where you just, you know, grab your levels and you just hang on. Right now, uh, we're just at these lows. I mean, you don't want to necessarily come in at the bottom. Well, I guess we may have to wait till the U.S. Open. I don't know. I mean, how much further we're going to go in and pull back in this, but it certainly is risk off. You can see crude on its lows. Um, take a look at gold. We're up here. Uh, still a nice little rebound.
Okay, and thanks for telling me. Uh, yeah, Mark and Mark Mark mentioned what does the blow off top look like? And Mark, I hope you stuck around yesterday because I extended the webinar almost a whole full hour explaining to you what what was going on because you were saying the blow off top and and I, I hope you were around yesterday afternoon yesterday when we did the webinar because I saw your message late and I ended up extending the webinar like another twenty minutes going over this whole thing so. Um, and then um, you say, uh, uh, please cover the YM levels for today and outlook. Do we wait for tomorrow? Okay, good, good questions. Um, that's what I just said was saying is you may have to just hang on. So let's, yeah, we'll take a look at the YM real quickly. Um, so yesterday, just to re-reference again, um, we were we were down here at. Um, I guess we were 20, 20, it must have been like 400, 420, 425, because at the time I told um, uh, Chi, I said, uh, he was asking about the YM levels, and I'd given him like a wow, you know, that's, he's trading really well. Uh, almost, I missed, a, I was going to try and scalp it, and I was saying, boy, this is trading better than the Spoos at the time. That was early in the morning, and I almost felt like saying, hey, you know what, I'm just going to go on and and, you know, trade this, but I missed a, a level at the time. The only trade I did yesterday was in the spoos. But I said, the next level is going to be 521. He goes, God, that's 100 points higher. And I go, well, God, there's, once you get past this 420, there's nothing but air. And sure enough, we made it there. Now we've expanded that. To me, this is your level right here, 521. Now we're looking at the daily, and the way I look at it, I look at the amount of touches against the closes. You see here, you see all these touches here, and – it almost looks like as if you look at it, uh, you know, the, the the moves have been so big that it almost like the, these levels are a little real small. I'll try and push up in that here. So we're looking actually at a daily. And you can see the high, the close, open, uh, and close right here. Open. You can see a close here, an open, right up here to high, a low. So you can see as the, all those touches, and they all come in at – 27,612. You know, it seems like this is pushed way back up, but it's when the, the chart condenses. So to me, the way I look at it, depend on how you want to want to go for it. Uh, that's what I'm saying is, what, and I'm going to equate this to what I was talking about, the spoos is yesterday, or actually in the Asian session, I'd done the analysis a little bit early or earlier for me. And uh, as I mentioned, um, Tawana came in, Tijuana, or what, I think Tawana, um, had come in and uh, she was, we were talking about, and she was, and, and I told her one of the things uh, I had seen, I'll get to those, those indices. I hadn't seen any reversals. I go, uh, they, and I mentioned this in the chat room, they've been right. I go, I've kind of jumped the gun early, but there's been not many reversals. But to me, I felt, and look, the spoos are still in, uh, YM is still pressing lower. I felt that it's going to be the indices in in total will have to lead it. Now, uh, I mean, I'm talking about the YM or Spoos or Nasdaq, and the individual stocks still keep keep to be on pressing on. And it looked like maybe we would need like a blow off top. But to me, the way I look at it is when the when the Fed announced that, which I thought was pretty jacked up. Thirty minutes just. Had, I mean, they could announce it in the morning. They could announce it late morning. They could announce it early afternoon or mid afternoon. They had to wait till less than 30 minutes before the close. Now, like I said, I don't have any positions, but to me, that sure looks pretty pretty uh, screwy there to say, well, you know, it almost looks like a Trump move, to be quite honest with you. But that saw us, and I was detailing you here, how we, we hit those stops above the spoos, although they didn't move too much higher, and then they finally really started to add on at that point. But the thing is, is, is uh, I think – that's the last. That's the last bullet out of the guns out of the Fed's uh, gun, to me the way I see it. And if there was something they wanted to wait for the uh, the announcement, they could have waited till then, or they could have waited till the morning of the meeting. So I don't think that there's anything left in in the chamber. To be quite honest with you, so yeah, if you were telling me, I'd say yeah, you'd want to sell against the six twelve, and that would be your your. Uh, your what you call your your stop level, or you want to call it your risk level at this point. That's the way I feel about it. And going back to what I was referencing here in the spoos that you're asking me, uh, <clears throat> and I'll go about the blow off top portion. That's exactly, <clears throat> excuse me. And here's the weekly. There's a the 3214 I was talking about. You can see how they cut back past this, but you can see the significance on the weekly. You see the close here, the low, close right here. 
close here, close, I mean, open. You see all those touches? So there were some other technicians that were looking for 32-14. I just, I mean, I happened to see them mention it yesterday. I just go with my own analysis here. But once again, you can see that 32-14. You can see here the market didn't even make it on Friday. And then on, on Monday, they were still trying to get there. They couldn't get there. Eventually, they did get past there. Uh, <clears throat> so looking at the daily, when I looked there, that's where I came up with this level right here. I go, where's the next closest level where I can see some touches? And I found 32-34. And the market uh, intraday has topped out at 32.32 or right at around 32.32. And you can see how high, I don't even follow oscillators, but I know that, uh, and I did mention this in the chat room, I know a lot of short-term, I call them desk jockeys, or I call them desk jockeys, like does it trade in New York, will use um, the five-day RSI when they're trading just the big, big stock names and they're day trading in and out. And I look, pulled these up, and we were at 93 on the S&Ps and at 91 or probably 92 now on the Dow futures. So that's what I'm thinking. We've gone about as far as we can. And when you look at perspective, I don't think we're going all the way back down here. I don't even think we're even going down here. Let's say that we just – and let's say we don't even come back to 2777. Let's say we just split the, split the difference and you come right here, right here to 2880. Let's just call it 2,900, okay? 2,900. We're not talking about down here to 20, whatever, 2,100, 20, whatever, 20 or whatever, uh, or 2,600 or 2,700. We'll just call it the 2,900. Look at that. That's still 300 handles away just from there. This, look at this. This is a 200-day moving average. You're still 200 handles away from that. 200 handles just from the 200-day moving average. And look how that was going to be a big deal. That's where the market was supposedly going to fade. And we're still 200 handles. So it, we're still got a ways to go on this thing here, okay? Um, I wouldn't necessarily rush in now. Uh, who knows? We could slide right now. But the, but the, the uh, pattern has been when we've seen these dips, I have to take a look on a 30-minute might be easier. When we've seen these dips, they come in uh, during the European session, and then they pick the market right back up. And then they pick, I know yesterday, uh, well, not yesterday, it was Sunday, they had dipped down to 31.83, and which was at the time, it was a two-day two two day, uh, VWAP. And then they came back down to 31.80, which the same thing, it was bordering, like the two-day VWAP was like right in here, okay? And then we turned around and rebounded right back. So you can see right now they're fading, and it may keep on fading. I mean, it's honestly, it's probably tempting. If you look here, right here at 31.96. And there's some volume right there. Some, and I mean, touches, okay? And this is on a 30 minutes. So we might, they may try and make a hold up for them now, okay? But it's probably going to take something like this where it kind of shocks the market a little. Not always shocked, but we come off and when they come into the New York session, like, whoa, we're... 35 handles off the low or off the high. Really, now we're off about 35. Actually, literally 35 handles. But you can see here, I'll do my, now, my analysis by right here. You see, it isn't like this is a five-minute chart. This is a 30-minute chart, okay? So look at this. You see all those touches there? Let me highlight this a little bit better. You see all those touches coming across? So that's, you see how we're at right now we're holding? That's pretty good volume here. Look at all these touches here. A lot of volume went off on, on this area here. All this right here, all these touches. If you were to look at there and say, where's an area where there was a, think of it as a value point of control, uh, uh, a point of control where the most volume traded at this level, you'd probably to say it's right there. So that's where, I, that's how, you know, you can look to see where there's the most volume coming here. You probably start to see some good short covering here. To what extent we push back, we'll have to see. But I think at this point, people are going to be willing, just like myself, be willing to say, you know what, I'm just going to take it on, and I'm going to hang on. You see what I'm saying? Even though uh, the Fed, I don't care about the Fed. I mean, I'm, I'm saying that's going to be my thinking. Not that I don't care, but I'm thinking, I think we're in a gunfight. And I think this guy on the other side of the rock, and, you know, the old Western days, I think he's out of bullets. I mean, because I, I think yesterday was their last bullet. 
the uh, they got the the uh, expanded lending for the small small businesses. And to me, that's the last one. I don't think that. And when we looked when we talked about the FOMC, I said that yesterday. I'm not sure what more that they're going to be. There's going to be questions if they should do any more at this point. That's what I'm thinking. Why they came out with that program announcement yesterday before the close? Because you know, if, if you can't, de- okay. A lot of some people question those employment numbers. One key economist can't remember his name questioned him and said he thought there might be some funny business and he really had a lot of people jump on him about that, about the employment numbers that, you know, hey, maybe they, whatever, the administration did something. So my, my point being is you can't say after that big number snapback that now the economy still needs more help. Not that it doesn't, but you can't say, come on the fence and say, oh, well, they still need more help. Uh, we just saw a pretty good bounce back in these employment numbers. Uh, we're seeing the economy – reopenings all over the place so you can't really you can't really hang your hat on and say with real conviction we're still going to be needing to do more of this and more of that that's why you know trump he's trying to and it's not trying to get into politics he's trying to tweak the stock market as much as he can so it's just oh a, hundred, a second stimulus p- program that, that that's it that's in the works that's 100 percent. it's no 100 percent. you can't make a big should do about the stock market being up here and the big recovery and say we need a second stimulus. And we had seen that towards the end of last week <clears throat> on Thursday is that a second stimulus may just be no chance for a second stimulus. Why should there be? I don't think that there should be at this point. And one of the reasons that I told you that around this area here, we were still rallying, okay, was because the thought was, we're going to get the second stimulus. So now we've, sm- we've milked this cow for all she's worth. And that's what I'm thinking at this point now, people will be willing to take pot shots now and say, you know what, I'll be willing to step in. So anyway, that's my, t- my take on that. Now getting back to, and then we'll get to everything else. Yeah, if Mark says go with the touches. Yeah, the touches, Mark, are going to show where the, where the volume is. You see what I'm saying? So when you, you'll hear a lot of people, the way I came up with this, I came up with this by myself, to be quite honest with you. Um, there was a guy that I used to follow years and years ago. He was pretty good, and, I, and he, would, he was real good at trading the euro at the time. And I'd say, well, where do you see this resistance? And he was – you know, this was years and years and years ago, and he would he wouldn't really tell me. Yeah, and I so I started trying to look at myself, and saying, "Well, where can I figure out where do I see this, and where's the market keeps reacting?" And I would just move my trend line. So, this isn't new, really. This comes from people that use market profile, and see, they go where the most volume is. Although that's a whole different thing, but a sort of sense. So, if you go where the most touches are, and I always tell people, I don't put my trend lines at the at the Mark them off at the high or the low. How many people actually bought the high and how many people bought the low? When you take volume into consideration, then you say, yeah, you're right. There isn't going to be any volume necessary, a ton at the very low or at the very high. So you look, and if you look at the touches, and I call them the touches, where the market made the most touches of closes, it could be open and closes, but it's really closes. And then sometimes you'll see the, the, um, the what you would call the, the low end of the the bar touch okay right in here so you can see you see how that bounce we saw that bounce has come up we already bounced off already four handles off of that and that's what I'm saying it was tempting to just say this is frustrating i'm just going to short it right here but yeah that's what i'm saying is it, it goes with with the touches um let me see yeah kind of like yeah you have i think um you were saying yeah i like the western film analogy it helps. The reason I say that, because it helps to have, look at the market. You'll see a lot of people talk about the market in analogies and with analogies. And that's why that's the way I can, the best way for me to convey is to say, you know what, at this point, I don't think the Fed has any more bullets in its chamber. You see what I'm saying? Now I think that, you know, there's nothing, he's got nothing left. And I don't think they do. And I think that's why it was important for them to say, Okay, they announced that program. It looked kind of shystery to me to go and announce it. Just happened to be like 20 minutes before the market closes. That seemed pretty shyster to me. Like they're trying to get the more bang. If they want to announce the thing, they could have announced it tomorrow, this morning. I'm saying they could announce it this morning. You know, if it was already that late in the day, or like I said, announced it, you know, two hours before. 
I mean, why do you wait to the last moment? You mean to, they didn't uh-huh. know the announcement until that very time? To me, it just seemed like Trumpy and like trying to tweak the market for all it's worth. But like I said, you know, uh, I think we've pushed about as far as we can push. You can see here, you know, right here, you can see here with the S&Ps here, uh, dipping down here, you can see the NASDAQ. They, they've had their own runs, but let me get back to... Um, yeah, he said, do you look at the correlations between YM with the dollar? To me, I feel the dollar's just following the equity. Everything's following the equity markets. So I'm not paying that much attention to the currencies as far as correlations or whatever. The equity markets are driving everything. They're even driving the Aussie dollar, everything. Not just the dollar, but they're driving risk on. It's all about the equity markets right now. Um, now, going to... Okay, so here's what I was talking about. You see, here's the high yield corporate debt. And you can see here, this is on dailies. And look how they've taken out those rebound dailies. You see what I'm saying? Here's on the uh, the XLF, which is the financials. It way took out its rebound daily. Same thing with the BKX, the banking index. Uh, I had one else. Oh, yeah, here's consumer discretionary. The reason I was following these was to, to give me a – really give me an idea when the markets may run out of gas. And I tell you what, I wish I'd have paid a little bit more attention. I wasn't very patient on Friday and it cost me on Friday, but you can see there hasn't been any turn. I think now we can see a turn. That's what I'm saying is, uh, but you can see here, they were actually on their low end, even the, uh, the XLF until we got that news about that lending. So, but I think as high as these are right now, I just think we're going to have to fall back in the indexes, indices, that being the YM spoos. We're going to have to go into falling back. But you can see, even with the high yield debt, that helped them a little bit. They were actually on their lows at the time, uh, looking to push to the lows when that news came out. But I think we're, we're at a point where we're kind of like running out of gas here. And now we may be able to go on and, and take a pair back. So let, let me go on and move on to the, um, we'll take a look at the uh, news for the day. And we had uh, French imports. Let's see, uh, Eurozone employment is, uh, final employment is at the top of the hour. Then we have um, Mexican headline inflation, core inflation coming to the States. We do have Jolt's job openings. Market may react to that. That's at 10 a.m. Eastern, okay? And then wholesale inventory. So keep this in mind. Market may go on and react to this number. Um, now, you are going to hear, oh, the Fed's having their meeting today, which is true, but it's going to be a two-day meeting. So nothing really comes out as far as news until tomorrow. So you don't have to worry about that or say, wait a minute, I thought you said the Fed was tomorrow. They're saying it's today. Well, it's a two-day meeting. So anyway, so let's go on and cover the news So the Australian dollar scales an 11-month peak and hits profit-taking. If you saw my thing, I even posted it yesterday. Actually, it's been the same bias chart resistance since Friday. It's 70.27. We made it up to 70.40, I think, and then we've come off quite a bit. We're now at 69.12, so we've really come off. And I talked to one gentleman um, who mentioned, I think he was trying to short the Aussie, and um, he shorted on Sunday night and got stopped out. And then he shorted again. I guess he must have shorted again. I told him, you know, you have to be more patient, but I think he was pretty frustrated, um, a newer trader. But um, my point being is to say that that these markets I mentioned to him was they've gotten very, very overstretched. And everybody's been, you know, it's been a challenging situation for a lot of people. You know what I mean? So, uh, but anyway, the Australian New Zealand dollar scaled fresh multi-month highs peaks on Tuesday as markets priced in an ever more optimistic outlook for the global recovery, though the size of the recent uh, gains drew profit taking at the peaks. Aussie is back to 69.98, having climbed as high as 70.43 at one of the point. The, uh, that briefly cleared the December top at 70.32. 
New Zealand dollar also gained at 65.49, after reaching its highest at 65.80. Both currencies have been on a tear as progress on reopening economies at home and abroad led markets to wage on quick recoveries. Figures out on Tuesday, the Australian business activity and confidence improved in May after huge declines in April, but were still depths usually associated with the recession. Job ads stabilized in May after a record drop the month before, but again suggests that the labor market will be weak for some time to come. The New Zealand dollar has just removed all restrictions and I put this in my news yesterday and I even noted I noted this even in the chat room yesterday because I saw this on on uh, 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 where Jacinda I can't remember her last name they released all the restrictions and also she was pretty happy the prime minister because it was all and I note that in my bias chart notes uh, uh, my Asian analysis notes yesterday uh, was the first day in New Zealand of zero recorded coronavirus cases. So I was saying in my notes, I said, and I did the analysis well early in the Asian session or in the Asian session, I said, hey, this is about as, the news got is, is about as good as it can get. Anyway, so if the RBA had seemed comfortable with the move and not offered to buy bonds for more than a month, the selling pressure caught the curve is coming from all, offshore with treasury selling off heavily last week. Uh, anyone buying was likely to be concentrated at three to five year part of the curve. And let's go on to the dollar. Dollar gains traction as trades fears knock abounding, abounding the Aussie. The dollar found some footing on Tuesday, rising against tearaway commodity currencies for the first time in June as investors paused to take profits. However, strong yen pointed to some, some trepidation over the U.S. Federal Reserve's next move as its two-day meeting starting later in the day. The Kiwi also pulled back after hitting a four-and-a-half-month four high on the first morning since New Zealand ended all social restrictions. I posted this in the, in the chat room on um, in uh, late yesterday afternoon, not very late, late, but in the in the uh, in the chat room yesterday afternoon. Um, so safe for its closed borders. Uh, that has the antipodean par snapping uh, nearly two weeks of gains that have propelled them some four percent or month higher for this month. There's discomfort that the glass has gone from half full to overflowing. Exactly, you see what I'm saying? Uh, it could have uh, could have herald some hiccups if seemingly unstoppable risk rally. Japanese names have yet been very active, have been very active in the dollar yen to trade off the chance for some kind of a yield curve control by the Fed. I personally don't think the yield curve control is necessary now. Elsewhere in Chinese yuan gave back its overnight gains. Um, the latest round of exuberance continues to shock to drive stock markets was last week's jobs data. Economies are smashed, but not smashed as badly as expected. And I think that's the key to whole rally. The virus also appears to retreat in April, where it's opening its gathering pace and prompting RBC markets to make a modest improvement for the 2020 GDP. So with that, we'll move into the analysis. Yeah, look at the, the spoos that basically run on their lows again. That's the thing. You do, it's it's almost like you want to step in and short it. Um, just just step back in here. It's almost like you you want to step in, but the penchant has been. You know, and you can see here where they could they actually make a new lows. They could make new low here and then hold. And then come rebound. I don't think we're going to rebound like bananas, but we could come back up towards this 3205. And you can see the two day VWAP comes in here at 3208. Two day VWAP for the uh, YM comes in at. 27334. 27334. Now you can see here, this is what I always base my. Um, uh, um, buy and sell signals. Look, look at the spoos. Look at it. It's been on a buy signal from right back here from the fourth. Okay. You see, look at, look at the, the YM. Same thing here. So my point being is it just now generated a sell signal. You see here, look at the spoos just now. Let's take to the, the, the NAS. We're just about there. We haven't yet. So that's what I'm saying is, and, and you can see here, the two-day VWAP is right there at 27.333. Two-day VWAP 
um, same day VWAP. We'll go to that quickly. So same day VWAP for the uh, YM is 27,460. You see, same day VWAP. And then uh, two day VWAP is gonna be 27,332 for right now. But yeah, you almost wanna just jump in now and say, forget this, uh, but the pension has been for them to snap back and you don't wanna step in and then the market comes back. I don't think it's gonna come back bananas, but it'll come back. Um, so let's let's move into the analysis. The, the thing you want to think is keep it in perspective. Let me go back here real quick. Because it's got to be frustrating to me. I was like, you know, I'm going to sell it. And I've been in that situation. And I end up selling near the lows, and you see it bounce back. But once again, you got to put it in perspective. Look at this. Look at that two-hour chart. Look at the YM. Just since May 24th. That's not even that long ago. Look at this run here. So for there, that's 24,000, essentially. 27. So you've rallied, essentially, 3,500 points. We've got a long ways to go. No need to rush it. Same thing here with the spoos. Look at the two-hour chart. Go here to May 24th. Right here, essentially, uh, looks like about 29.10 or so. And look, so essentially we've rallied 300 handles. So I'm saying it's a ways to go. You know, but I think peeps will be looking. And the thing is, I think we could see some pretty good, we could see a pretty good scary day over the next couple of days. Once again, the Fed's going to hold, but I don't think the Fed can really do anything. I don't think there's anything left in the left in the bank anymore. You know I mean? They've emptied, emptied out the registers and there's nothing left. So people are going to be taking pot shots. And it, it is kind of frustrating to see this thing kind of still slide. But we know that that 31.95.6 area is some value support. So, uh, but once again, you'll just have to just mark up those levels. And, uh, but I think we still have ways to go. Well, like I said, we just generated a sell signal. So he moves back into here, like right there. That's actually would be with VWAP right there. You see some good touches. The one to come in before would be 27,294 right there. So let's go and get into the analysis now. We spent quite a bit uh, looking on there. Oh, uh, what is, okay, he says I'm a learner. What is VWAP? It's volume weighted average price. So um, so when you look at, at uh, um, you look at, at um, the best way to look at this. Let me, let me go back to that. A lot of people will use VWAP. Um, now here's the current day VWAP, which is a 27,460. And you can see here, let me show you. You see how the market was riding VWAP? You see that? So I'm going to uh, uh, give you an example real quick. So if you were to, um, let's say we were looking at two bars. Um, it was a two 30-minute bars, okay? And the price on the first bar was, was uh, 100, and the price on the second bar was 200. So you'd say the average price there is going to be 150, right? The first bar was 100. The, the second bar was uh, uh, 200. You say the average price was 150, Okay. But let's say that the opening bar was 100, and at that time, um, 100,000 shares traded at it. And on the next bar that was 200, only, let's say, 20,000 shares traded at it. So if you were to, so instead of saying, if you were to say, well, the average price would be 150, the average price by number is, but if you look at the amount of volume that traded, that's where it was really key. And look, the spoons are still going lower at 2193. So you put more emphasis on where the volume is because you can see right here, you can see where the most volume is traded at. That's where this market is moving down. Right here now we have, you can see here. Go with me. 
this is going to be uh, the point of control right here, right there, as far as volume. But each, the more volume that is weighted, that's why you're seeing this thing turn down. So it, it, it adjusts with the amount of volume that's traded at a certain price. So as this market, probably we saw like a ton of volume, not a ton, but the more volume we come in here, it's gonna drag this, it's gonna go in and drag this uh, market down here. So you'll see this tilt down and you can see, probably not giving a very good explanation, but you can see how this market trades with VWAP. And once we got, you can see here how we defended VWAP, we try and go against it. And as we start going below VWAP, the market starts to accelerate because now we're losing that momentum and it's pushing it even lower. But anyway, let's go and get into the analysis. Um, So the euro paired back on Monday only slightly maintained a solid bid. Support will be 1237 with resistance at 1334. So, so far the low has been. Twelve thirty nine. So not bad. I put twelve thirty seven. And 1334 is going to remain the same here. Let's now move into the cable. We are way behind now. Um, cable remained on the bid, although prices kept in check by the bias chart resistance at 2742. Resistance will remain the same with support at 2623. So we'll have to get this show moving. Wow, I didn't even realize it was that late. Moving into the Aussie. You can see the significance of 7027. We've actually had 7027 as our bias chart resistance since Friday. So it says here, the Aussie continued on its way with another day, another high. Bias chart resistance will remain the same of 7027 we supported 69.40. Well, we've already taken out 69.40. We've actually pretty good dip. So, right now we've had a pretty good dip here. Logo at the touches. You see this high here, close here, and then the open, and then the low here, right there. So let's just go right there. It's going to be this low here. So we'll go with 68.79. Um, it's it's come up pretty good, but it's way overbought. So I had 68.96 here. Yesterday, so we'll just move this down to 68.79 because we've seen a pretty good pullback, and I think risk is going to start to come off. So, in a, in a more meaningful way, I want to say, uh, let's go to the Kiwi. So the Kiwi's meteoric run continues unabated. The pair may need, meet its challenge with a confluence of 6594 uh, with 6603, the 88%. Wow, these foods are still making new lows. Uh, Tuesday is the new day, uh, is the day New Zealand was li to, to lift all restrictions. It's also the first day that New Zealand celebrated no new coronavirus cases. News can't get any better. Support will be 64.93. Well, we can see we've even dipped below. So support's going to be this level right there, which is going to be 66.41. Was it? No, it's 66. 64.64. 64, 64. I did put 64. 64. And resistance, I was saying, was going to be uh, 
6594, which it didn't get there. But that was resistance. We are still going lower. It's not surprising that it couldn't it can't go lower because it's this market's way overdone. We don't really get meaningful support until we get to 631.73 when it comes to the spoos. And we're so overbought that we could maybe even get down and challenge that. Um, the next key level for spoos is 3186. And for Dow is 27051. Um, let's go and move in now to the CAD because we are way behind. Fowl account is mired just below the 34 level. Support will be 3352 with a potential of 3320. Resistance will be 3437. We're actually passing below by, by this. So it's actually going to be that bar here. You see that close? 3497 will be resistance now. 3497. And support is this level right here. They've been trying to fit, which is 3375. Dollar pace continues to defend 21.524. Support be 21.34 with, with resistance at 22 even way. They've defended, they keep on defending this 21.54 right there. And so they've been defending that. So 21.54 and 22 even. Going to the dollar yen. So the dollar yen saw a stark reversal on Monday, taking out the prior three days closing support on Tuesday will be the key level of 778. That's exactly where they stopped, 778, you see that? With resistance at 855. So 778 did hold it. Next will be the dollar index. Dollar index remains a slump. The market has the potential to re revisit support at 96.42. It almost made it there uh, with a possible washout to 96.01. Resistance will be 97.13. Well, we've actually rallied to 97.05. So it's 97.13. Ninety-six forty-two, there. Okay, let's go and move into the cross rates. Okay, you see a pretty good pullback here. You can see that in the QEN. Support's going to be 69.74, just going with the levels. You can see that. And resistance at this point is going to be the middle of these bars. You can see, like I said, these little touches, 70.64. Going in with the euro yen. Boy, have we seen a pullback. We talked about this bar here last Friday. Wow, they have really pulled back quite a bit. Support's going to be right, the touches right here. You see that body close there? That's going to be 2106, although we've come off the lows. And resistance, you can see this, the, the resistance is going to be this low from yesterday. And that is 22.23. Well, wow, so a pretty good rebound here in the spoons right now, 31.98. Uh, rallied nine handles off the lows. Well, we got to as low as 31.89.
Okay, we're finally trying to make a defense here. Supports 6087 on the euro odd. And we have taken out this area here. The next upside key challenge, there is resistance right here where we're at 6298. Um, we're going to give it the benefit of the doubt to push a little bit higher, which is going to be 6341. And you can see the level right there. Oh, we did have 63.42, so we'll leave that there. Next one is Euro Kiwi. This key level, which is 71.66, seems to have held it. You can just go. So, wow, we even got past the 73.09. Holy smokes, 71.66 with resistance right there at that bar. 74, oh, 74, 70. A little bit higher than we had yesterday. Going into the Aussian. Finally seeing the pullback. We've got some support right in here for today. Uh, we'll just go with that level, which is right there, 74.46. And resistance is going to be right there at that close, which is going to be 75.34. Moving on to the guppy. Thirty-six, thirty-nine. Uh, that is a key level right there. You can see that, and that's going to be support resistance. Thirty-seven, fourteen. Just going with the levels. And lastly, starting nod. Eighty eighty nine has been holding pretty well. So same thing, no changes. And resistance is going to be the low right here on this bar, which is 8338. 8338. Well, there we go. I mean, um, we got it all done. And you can see the euro trying to make a hold here. We had that low at 12.37 for support. We're at 12.65. So we are defending it right now, trying to make a stand here. But that's what we have. We'll see you in the chat room. And thanks for joining us here on the European Crossover webinar.